This video is on graphing derivatives. So graphing derivatives to start with can be a little bit confusing and it can take our brains some time to fully comprehend what's happening for some people. If that's the case for you, don't stress about it. Um, you will get there with them. It's just thinking about graphs differently. So the graph of a gradient function is different to the graph of a function, okay? But don't stress, we'll go through two examples and see how you go. So for this first example, we have this graph here, which is in part A, the graph of the function. And we want to graph the first derivative and the second derivative. So the first thing we need to notice in this graph is that of this original function, the minimum is when x equals 2. And I've just put a little dot there. So we know that at a minimum, the gradient at that point is 0, which means that point on our first derivative will be on the x-intercept because the gradient at that point is zero. So any maximum minimum points will move for our derivative graph to the x-axis. Now if we look at this graph we see it is the function is decreasing before x equals 2 and then it's increasing after x equals 2 which means when we draw a graph for our gradient function before x equals 2, the graph needs to be below the x-axis because it's negative. Now also remember with your um, derivatives, this is a quadratic function and the derivative of a quadratic is linear, which means we're just going to be having a straight line. Now let's go back to the graph. So before x equals 2, we saw here it was a negative gradient, which means the graph is going to be below the x-axis. So something like that. And then when it's after the minimum point, the function is then increasing and it has a positive gradient, which means the graph of the derivative will be above the x-axis in the positive space. So the graph doesn't have to be exact in terms of its y values, but it just has to cross at the intercepts correctly and be in, in the correct space above or below the x-axis, depending on whether the gradient is positive or negative. Now we want to graph the double derivative. So think about a linear graph. If we do the derivative of a linear function, we will get a constant. So when we do that, we look at this graph and go, okay, this first derivative is a linear line and it has a positive gradient, which means the derivative of this graph will be in the positive axis. And like I said, it doesn't matter where you draw it because we don't actually know what the full second derivative value is. But because the first derivative has a positive gradient, a constant positive gradient for the whole thing, the graph of that derivative will just be in above the x-axis in the positive quadrants. Now part b, we've been being told now that this graph is the first derivative. So when a graph is the first derivative, how we approach sketching things is going to be slightly different. So because it's a quadratic for our first derivative, it means our original function will be a cubic function and our second derivative would be the linear. Now we drew the second derivative before, that's going to be the same because it's the same graph. So even though this graph is the first derivative, the second derivative of that will still be the same. So it's just going to be this straight line. Now we want to sketch the original function. So this is where we have to think slightly differently. So in our original function, we need to know where were our maximum and minimums. Now remember, the first derivative, when that equals 0, that's where the maximum and minimums are. So in this graph, the x-intercepts are at negative 1 and 5. Now because this, we're now looking at this as a derivative, that means that must have been where the maximum and minimums were. Now we don't yet know which is a maximum and which is a minimum. We need to look at the graph around it. So if we look at the graph at this negative 1 point, before negative 1, the graph is in the positive y value, which means it was increasing getting, getting to this point. After negative 1, the graph is negative because it's below the x-axis, which means after that point, the function was decreasing. So it was actually a maximum at negative 1. So we can just draw a point here, and then we know it was before 
it was a maximum. So it's going to go something like this. Now, five, if we look at five, before five, the graph of this function here was in a negative space on the graph, which means it had a negative gradient. So it was negative before it reached the point of five. And then after five here, the gradient is positive because it's in the positive section of the graph, which means it went from negative to positive. So it was a minimum. So five was a minimum. Now these axes aren't really drawn the best for drawing this graph, but we'll just give it a go. Let me just erase that one again. So we know that this was maximum here. And so we know it's minimum at, maximum at negative one, minimum at five. So we need to go up to this one. This is gonna go down here somewhere, go to there and then back up. All right, let's have a look at another example. So we've got this beautiful looking diagram and we want to sketch the first and second derivatives of it. So this is our function, which is excellent. So if we sketch the first derivative, so what we want to look at is where the maximum and minimum points are. So we have a maximum there, minimum there, maximum, minimum, maximum. And those points, remember the gradient of those points is zero, which means for the gradient graph, they need to be on the x-intercept because they are zero. So those points will move to the x-axis. Now we need to look at where things are increasing and decreasing. Now if we look at the function before this maximum point, the first maximum point here, it is increasing and then decreasing. So we're increasing before, then we are decreasing after. So because we are doing that, that means our graph needs to be above the x-axis before that point for our derivative, and then below after. Now, if we look at the next minimum point, this point here, it is decreasing as it comes to that point and then increasing. So before that minimum, we are a decreasing gradient, so it needs to be below the x-axis and then we are above. Then it changes to positive at the turning point, so we draw a line above the x-axis because the gradient is positive. Now, if we look at this really high turning point, the gradient is positive going up to that point. So our graph needs to stay above the x-axis until it gets to that point. Then it decreases after down to the next minimum. So our line needs to be drawn below the x-axis because it's a negative gradient. And we do that for the rest. And then we see we end up with something a bit like that. Now, if we're drawing the second derivative of this, what we need to look at is we need to look at the maximum minimums of our derivative. And our maximum minimums of our derivative now become our new x-intercept values. And then from there, look at where the gradients, positive and negative. So for this first minimum point here, the gradient is negative as it comes to that point and then positive after. So our graph needs to be in the negative part of the axes as it gets that point, then our graph changed to a positive gradient. So it will be above the x-axis. This next minimum point, it's positive as it gets to it. And then as it changes to the changes, it goes down to a negative gradient. So it go, we need to graph that below. And then we carry that idea for the rest of the graph. And we'll get something that kind of looks like this. So always just look at where the turning points are. The turning points become the new x-intercepts. Then look at what's happening before and after the turning points. If it is increasing or the gradient is positive, get into that turning point, then you draw the gradient above the x-axis. And then when the gradient is negative, either before or after the turning point, that needs to be drawn below the x-axis because it's negative. That is graphing derivatives. So from your booklets, you can now go to booklet five, and this is basically all of booklet five is on sketching curves.
So get on with booklet five, finish that one, and I will talk to you all soon.